The small dark one, or little darky, is a complex character. And well, he still is. Now as I said 11 months ago in my last video, the small dark one, or little darky, is a complex character. And honestly, I still completely agree with that standpoint, but I just felt the need to remake my last video because, well, however, unlike other artists, he applies something unique and new to the table besides recycling the same drama and rehashing it for every single song. And I mean, it's obvious at the beginning of listening to someone's music, you usually know nothing about them, but in the end behind his lyrics, and no, I'm not talking about the K on his rifle, I'm talking about how you can notice he's an artist focused on doing what he truly loves to do, being creative and venting through what he creates. And even though not everybody may take into consideration and value what he says, that is mainly because they don't notice his lyrics are most of the time about something he disagrees with or mental health and dealing with drug abuse in the past. Honestly, I didn't expect the last video to get big because, well, most artist videos don't do as good as everyone would expect. I can speak from experience. Yeah, Riffro, how's that Will Lowry video treating ya? It ain't my fault he's irrelevant. Anyways, I believe it's the symphonic chaos of his songs, the tone and the art of course that goes into most of his songs that separate him from the crowd at least for me and many people who listen to his music. Now before I get into this video, I decided this would probably be my last video on Spider Gang related content, most likely because I don't really feel like creating it anymore and I'd rather make commentary and gaming content. But I've made other videos on a few other artists and uh, people in Spider Gang, so in case you'd like to watch those as well, I'll just put a link in the comments to the playlist. Or you can just subscribe and like, that'll help out a ton too. But that being said, today I'm going to discuss why I personally like Lil Darky's music, how it's unique to me, more of who he is, and how he rose a bit in popularity. Now at the start of listening to Lil Darky, we're dropped into a void as the artist evolves with what he creates over time. He's essentially finding himself with his music. And with nothing but animations, drawings, and personality behind one's voice, it makes you reminiscent of an era long gone. So that being said, this video is the untold story of Lil Darky. Now let's put on something creative. For those who don't know, Lil Darky or Joshua Hamilton, born October 6, 1998, is a rapper, artist, and producer who resides in Long Beach, California. He ended up founding the collective group known as Spider Gang. He started rapping around 2016 when he was 17 going to the name Brahmin, a whole different style. The most notable style is in a song titled Goonies and Boonies. To get dome, fuck forcing it, only with the natives I roam. So what you trying to say? Pine tree skyline, and if you talking shit, don't hear my line. I think this helped him develop his persona more as time progressed and he kept making more music, but of all you can't compare Brahmin to Lil Darky even though they're the same person because they really had different styles. Brahmin is his oldest known persona, while being known as Brahmin, his character was blue and represented Indian gods. And then one day during an acid trip and researching the gods, he realized that the Indian gods are supposed to be depicted as black, and in the scripture they're said to be black as midnight, but people depicted them as blue, and why may you ask? Well, after researching it, he realized it's because over time, people started depicting them as blue because it makes them look more appealing. Most people would think it's sort of terrifying and they don't have faith in something they fear, so sometimes they depict them blue in art so that you can see their facial features better or they look less barbaric. And so then he decided to draw his character the same as his old one, but black and therefore more defining himself and what he felt more close to than his former persona. Back before he gained popularity, growing up Joshua was a high school boy scout. Joshua was a frequent target of racial bullying and when he began attending film school there was an issue with administration that is still unknown to this day. It eventually led him to dropping out and creating his more known persona today, Lil Darky, which is the personification of his suffering from what he went through while growing up. A lot of people think his drawn character and persona is depicting a black person, but it's not. And his response to that in an interview of Cult Classic is, I can take something that is my culture and is beautiful to me because in Indian culture our gods are black skin in the text. I can take something that's my culture and make it beautiful and you can look at something that's been ugly, that's been evil, and like I can take it away and it's not fucked up anymore because I feel like there's nothing racist about this character. Like if you look at him and you're like, that's like a black guy, then I feel like you're the one with the weird preconceived notion in your yeah. head. Basically, there's a bunch of people who were on TikTok who just automatically assumed he's white and thought his character was racist when he's not white at all. And it just didn't all make sense, it didn't add up. So if you really just still think that his character's racist without even getting to know him like the people that were on TikTok, because in his culture, the gods are solid black. The red stripe on his character is for Spider Gang. If you see this character and think he's supposed to represent black people, then maybe you're jumping too quick to conclusions and judging his character or persona too quick. And oh my god, Elucid talking about race? 
That's totally unepic, bro. Now, personally, if you see a problem with Darky for what his character looks like, then clearly you have the mental capacity of a grain of sand and are making it a race problem in general. And the sad part is, people actually do have a problem with it, and people attempted to cancel him on TikTok for multiple things, which is honestly just stupid. So, why don't we just get into it? A while back, there were groups of people who tried to cancel Darky. They could all try to cancel Darky, but in the wise words of simply not giving a fuck, you can't cancel someone who doesn't care. Now let me sum this up for you. Essentially, we all know how TikTok works. It's full of people who dance to songs and people who create wrongs. It's essentially full of people who look for things to spread negativity towards. And the second one of his songs blew up on TikTok, some of these people were upset because he said the N-word or b So they tried to make out any sort of direction they could just to take it in order to cancel him by saying he was racist or homophobic. You can be anyone. You can be gay, straight, black, white. Yeah, and, any and color. That, and any I think at whatever, the end of the day, you know? I think at the end of the day, that's like some good advice too. Is just mm -hmm. like as cliche as it sounds, like just be yourself because that's what people are gonna att attract. Like it's gonna attract mm -hmm. the most people for real. Because like only you could be yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that's like what it comes down to. Shit too. Like me being racially ambiguous. Most people don't even know I'm Indian by like looking at me or mm -hmm. like part Indian. Yeah, they're just like, oh, let's assume what race he is and shit. So then I say nigga and shit with my friends because like be niggas but then like people like hit me up and they're like why are you saying nigga you're not black and it's like yeah like be mad then because like i'm not going to change who i am for, for you. you you know because it's like that's who i am he's a bisexual man of color and they think his character does blackface because he's not black or that he's homophobic when he literally made a song called trans appreciation day and he's bisexual himself People need to calm down and just forget about it. I mean, I could see if their argument was valid, but it isn't clearly when they're trying to find something to cancel that isn't there. He's one of the few rappers who speaks his mind and doesn't rap about meaningless bullshit, which makes him a more open artist to his audience. In the middle of 2019, Spotify temporarily removed his music and Instagram even blocked his account after he posted a cover of the Buddhist swastika, which is a symbol of peace, balance, and unity in his religion. Of course, the platform's actions led to concern over who has the right to determine which songs are controversial and should be given a platform. After all, Spotify and SoundCloud pride themselves on being a place which allow anyone to share their music. But then we had Darky over here who was taken down because they have mistaken a symbol of peace for a symbol of hatred. In a series of since-deleted Darky tweets, he said, Plenty of art is offensive, that doesn't mean it should be censored. And he shouldn't have to water down or censor his perspective just to stay on a website. Lil Darky isn't someone people can cancel easily because he's someone who doesn't cleanly fit into any category, whether it's social, sexually, politically, whatever. Because he's just a non-hostile person all around and only looks for positive ways to impact people of his audience. I've had the chance to speak with Lil Darky a while back after I made my first video on him, and I can say that although I only knew him for a call, I got the sense that his intentions were too chill to become negative. He just was a nice guy all around who uses what he creates as his and his listeners' outlet to express their frustrations and disappointments. Darky said everyone wants to be an individual, but no one has the balls to actually do it, and that's why he does this. People love it, so he likes that he can spread positivity in people's lives. Now I'll leave it up to Bryson to discuss the creation of Spider Gang. The idea of Spider Gang started around early 2018, founded by Lil Darky, Wendigo, Cubensis, Bromaine God, Black, and Salsa. Darky states that after he dropped Draining the Swamp, Spider Gang started becoming more solid and group oriented rather than everyone just focusing on themselves. The idea for Spider Gang comes from Wendigo, who came forward with the idea let's be like spiders and let shit come to us in our webs rather than searching for it. A14 met Darky through a mutual friend, Chauncey666. This was around the time Darky he would release his first album under his new alias of Lil Darky, titled Kill Yourself. A14 would soon join Spider Gang in June of 2018, and this is where Spider Gang would start to take off and develop into what it is today. The group would go on to link up at Darky's house in LA, with members flying in and out to chill, plan and produce. John Askus and Stone Man were the next members to join the collective in July of 2018. As it said, these two inspired the original members. The group worked so well as everyone brought something unique to the dynamic of the group, with Stone Man being the most normal and refreshing to be around and John being the insane experimental guy. They don't see each other as rappers and producers. To quote Darky, they see each other as a bunch of n****s. They like seeing each other as the realest humans they've met so far. Not much is known about Corpse and Chris Dillinger's joining of Spider Gang other than their first collaborations within the collective came in about July of 2019. Flacco and Edison had heard Darkies post in the dark and reached out to him. The three would begin talking and subsequently would begin working together, starting a now subdivision of Spider Gang known as Gunk Rock. 
due to the time spent working together and getting to know each other, Flacco and Edison would join Spider Gang on the 13th of September 2019. The next recruit into Spider Gang would be MK Ultra. He had done a few shows with Wendigo and Christ Dillinger and was later introduced to Darky, Cubensis and Corpse, in which friendships would form and an invitation to join Spider Gang would be made. The most recent recruit into Spider Gang would be Teenage Disaster, who would join on the 17th of November 2020. I mean, now that's it. That's every current member of Spidey Gang, right? Well, prior to Spidey Gang, there was a collective known as Native Cruiser Records, or NCR for short, in which many of Spidey Gang's members were once a part of. Two of those members you may recognise are Stone Man and Edison. I mean, once former members of the same collective, and now again members of the same collective. The two must have a great friendship. Stone Man left Spidey Gang in May of 2020. Now we know exactly who's in Spidey Gang and when they all joined, let's talk a bit more about the group and the music they create together. As previously mentioned, much of Spidey Gang was once in a collective known as NCR, including Darkie, who was still going under the alias of Brahman, Stone Man and Edison, which we discussed, and Cubensis. This is where Darkie would meet Cubensis. However, there was also another collective before Spidey Gang known as Cult, or Cult International. This collective was started by Bromain God and his brother, and housed four current Spidey Gang members. Darkie, Bromain God, Black, and Wendigo, with Salsa even producing some of their music. Now, two separate collectives started before Spider Gang, which combined were home to eight Spider Gang members and seven current Spider Gang members, including the founding six Darky, Wendigo, Cubensis, Black, Bromain God, and Salsa. Now, thanks to Reddit, I was able to find the NCR's original Twitter account and find out that the current Spider Gang YouTube account used to be Native Cruiser Records' YouTube account. The first Twitter post from the NCR Twitter was made on March 2nd, 2017, captioned, Let the Winning Begin. Doing some simple analysis, I can deduct that Native Cruiser Records was probably founded around March 2nd of 2017. Using what we know about the history of Spidey Gang and its members, we can see why it all works so well, and why they all work so well together. Seven of the current 13 Spidey Gang members had not just known each other for years, but had worked together producing music and beats and writing music together. It's a group with a lot of different styles for sure, but that's one of the main reasons it works so well. The collective is so diverse, yet they can all hop on the same track together, and it's still sound like it fits and that's because it does they're more than just a rap group or a soundcloud group i think a lot of it comes down to the fact that they're genuinely friends and they all know each other's styles and flows so well to every yin there's a yang and with spider gang it shows lil darky is a very versatile artist who doesn't just range in music but in art as well you could get a heart pumping song or one that makes you think deeper and refined of negativity throughout his entire discography and the more you listen to what he puts out the more you see the deeper meanings behind his words and how he portrays the way he feels for each and every song Song, especially if you reverse one of his songs. If you reverse one of his songs, you can get something like this. I have accepted death. I have accepted my place in this reality. I have accepted that everything is temporary. That nothing really matters. I would play the song the original direction, but I'm scared this video is going to get claimed like my last one. <clears throat> I hope Dark here moves the claims because, you, you know, I gotta make money somehow. But back to the topic, Darkie is unique to say the least. He's creative, talented at blending music genres, and he has the versatility to become one of my favorite artists of all time. The point of this video is just to say that it would be nice to give him a chance. Because while scripting this, I was having trouble deciding what to say because there are a lot of great things to say about his music. Due to the amount of time that Darkie just evolves with what he creates, I can only see success in his music because despite the humor he throws in some of his songs and the loss of his lighter, you can easily notice something, well, deeper. Not empathy or understanding, but finding one's true existence and peace of oneself. Whatever it is through his music, can't be described as anything but raw emotions played through acoustics and 808s. It's impossible not to feel transported this time, and not just into the mind of Darkie, but into a different state of mind altogether, into Spider Gang's mind. Each of the people in this entire collective inspire each other to make things. They are creative and create their own flow and design, but without them, all of them having each other, they wouldn't be really the whole Spider Gang. It's like how spiders can trap a lion if they all work together with their webs. I feel like you can't really make a whole video about Darkie if you're not making a whole video on Spider Gang. So I decided to branch off halfway through the script and just be like, hey, when they work together, they create something different. But back to what I was saying, even after the success of his song Haha and Genocide Part 4 blowing up on TikTok and multiple platforms, he still stayed true to who he is, and although there were plenty of people who went after him for what his character looks like or a word he said in a song, some listeners just don't take into account that his views and beliefs are different and everyone is equal in his eyes. It doesn't matter who you are, we're all human to him, and that's why I like his music, because it has different intentions behind it. 
and a lot of different attentions from other artists in my opinion. Listening to a darky song is a visceral and real take on some of the real issues we handle today. And the problems anyone can really come to terms with, such as depression, questioning our everyday lives, or even being fed up with how society is. And the reason why I really just believe that he sets himself apart more than others is because of how he doesn't care what other people think. I was going to discuss how the fans of Spider Gang helped me out a ton with research on certain topics. Like, this video would not have been done without the help of you guys, honestly, and I, I just want to say thank you a ton, especially for the stuff that we found on the Reddit, like the Spider Gang timeline and the Darky album Iceberg. It just helped picture the timeline for the format of this video, and we wanted to get in a better direction, and that just helped us go that direction a better way. Plus, it was cool as fuck to see this music video remade in Minecraft, because I'm not gonna lie, that shit was funny as hell, along with a few edits here and there. But yeah, before I end this video, I wanted to go off by saying everyone has different tastes in music, and I respect if his music isn't really your type to listen to. However, Darkest music is different in my eyes, and if you listen to his lyrics carefully and listen, you'll see that he's a very unique, talented artist. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos. I hope Darky starts tumoring soon or something, because I'd be sick, I'd definitely go. But that being said, Elucid's the name, and as Darky said, Sub to Elucid. I hope everyone has a good day. Thanks, Bryson, for hopping on the video. And oh yeah, the, the credits go here, huh? You're gonna get clammed. Fuck it, roll the credits.